Hi everyone, this is Dr. Gail Carson. Welcome to Living Regret Free, a program that shows you how to live a better and more joyful life. As an added bonus, I invite you to listen to an introduction to my Mindset Matters program, which ties into this so well. Go to www.sobmindset.com. It's free and I know you will enjoy it. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at gailcarson13 at gmail.com or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. My guest today is Dr. Susan Chumsky, who dedicates her life to helping people take command of their lives in highly effective, powerful, positive ways. She's the best-selling author of 17 books in English, published by Simon & Schuster, Random House, Penguin, Red Wheel, New Page, and Skyhorse, and 34 books in foreign languages. She's won 31 prestigious book awards and is a pioneer in the human potential field. She's taught meditation, prayer, affirmation, and intuition to thousands worldwide for decades. Welcome, Dr. Susan. I'm very excited to be here with you today, Dr. Gail. Well, I'll tell you, I have a question for you in the first thing that I'm going to ask that I am not very good at, tried many times, and do not do well. And that is, how popular is meditation today? Well, according to surveys, approximately 10% to 14% of Americans claim that they meditate. That's a huge, huge number of people. I think that's true because I know that people that I follow and when I go to seminars and workshops and so forth and people are asked about, you know, how they center themselves or how they reduce stress, they all talk about meditating and my meditation practices are abominable. And what I do when I want to relax, well, of course, I work out. That's one way of relaxing, but also my cats. I spend a lot of time with my cats on my lap and petting them and that works for me but um you know why why do you think meditation is so important at this time well you know people are fearful people don't know what the future is going to hold they're very concerned about economics they're concerned about political issues they're all wound up about a lot of different uh problems in their lives and at this time it's very very important that not only do we learn how to rest and relax and create greater well-being and health and energy but also how to make the best decisions in our lives it used to be that people felt very secure in their jobs you know they they knew they would have a pension. They knew what would the future would bring. But today, people are very, very fearful because they don't know what's going to happen. Uh, they might be laid off. They have no pension. What are they going to do in the future? So that's why today, more than ever, it's very, very important that people learn how to make the wisest decisions with peaceful confidence. And the best way to do that would be to develop your intuition, develop your sixth sense, and learn how to listen to the still small voice within and be guided by that voice, which never will steer you wrong. It always steers you in the best possible direction. Well, you know, what you're saying is, is, is so true. I, I believe that um, people get too vested in what's going on, let's say, in the world, in the universe. And it's not that you shouldn't be passionate about a subject or that you shouldn't be an active member of any group that you would like to be that you feel is bettering the world. But there's a lot of things that you and I personally can't do anything about. And we need to be able to let it go. And whatever that form is to do it, uh, is 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 great. Uh, I do listen to uh, one of the morning shows in the morning to get what's going on, but that's it. I don't listen to news the rest of the day. And guess what? 
it will find you anyway. I mean, it pops up on your phones. It it just is everywhere. So uh, you do something which is called guided meditation. And uh, you mentioned it just a minute ago. How does that differ from the other forms of meditation that are out there? There's many, many different ways to meditate, different brands, different forms of meditation and so on. And the first type of meditation that I learned as a youngster was uh, something called Transcendental Meditation, which is founded by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And I ended up uh, living in his various ashrams, that uh, ashram, that word means a place that you go to live with a spiritual master from India. It's a residential facility where you learn from a spiritual uh, guru. And so I was in his ashrams for over 22 years, and I was on his personal staff for six of those years. So during that time, uh, I was uh, practicing meditation anywhere from five to 20 hours a day. It was a very intense intensive experience of deep meditation that I encountered at the time. And uh, later in my life, I learned something that I now call divine revelation, which is a very, very uh, powerful form of meditation that I actually like even better than transcendental meditation. I had fantastic experiences with a TM otherwise known as Transcendental Meditation. And by the way, that guru was the guru of the Beatles, uh, became the guru of the Beatles later after I had already learned how to uh, practice it. But later I uh, became an expert in this method, Divine Revelation, and that's what I practice uh, now, and that's what I teach. Now that type of meditation is very different because Transcendental Meditation, or TM, uses a mantra. A mantra is a Sanskrit word or group of words that you use. And in, in that case, you use it mentally. You think, you think the, words, the word or words. And uh, through that process, you go deeper and deeper into the meditative state. Your mind goes from the level of the environment down to uh, go, going deeper and deeper into meditation until you experience a state called transcendental awareness, which is beyond our normal states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, or deep sleep state. It's an experience of deep inner peace, deep relaxation, unbounded awareness, expansion of consciousness, so that is a powerful, powerful method of meditation known as TM, Transcendental Meditation. Uh, the form that I teach right now, which is called Divine Revelation, is more about having a direct uh, contact and communication with the Divine Presence in whatever form you believe that to be, to be able to communicate with that Divine Presence, uh, experience your higher self, you might call it your higher self, and be able to develop your clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient abilities, your superpowers, we might call them, or subtle sensory perception, your spiritual gifts, and to be able to use that in a, in a powerful and positive way, in, in a practical way in everyday life, be able to uh, use that intuition to answer very, very mundane problems, to, to uh, solve very mundane problems, ask very mundane questions, and be able to receive guidance, wisdom, inspiration, and healing from within yourself to become self-empowered and self-sufficient. But are each of those guided meditations? Uh, no. Uh, transcendental meditation is definitely not a guided meditation. However, divine revelation can be a guided meditation. Either you guide yourself into it, or uh, in the case of my new book called Third Eye Meditations, that particular book is filled with guided meditations. In other words, uh, you are led step by step through the process. Uh, all you have to do is either read the words on the page, or even better, record, uh, use your own voice to record the meditations 
onto a recording device and then uh, sit down, close your eyes, uh, get relaxed, close your eyes, and then um, just allow yourself to go into this deep meditative state by listening to those words. And, uh, and also, by the way, the book Third Eye Meditations is available as an audio book as well. Well, that's, uh, you know, I, and my, uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was how you have 17 books in English and then 34 books in a foreign language. I mean, uh, how did that happen? I mean, uh, because, more in foreign languages than in English. <laughs> well, that, that would naturally happen because a book would be translated into many different foreign editions, into several different foreign editions. And do you find that other countries are more adaptable to meditation than the United States? I would say that people in the United States are actually more interested in meditation than people from foreign countries, uh, unless that country is India, is, is somewhere in the Far East. Uh, those people, it's just naturally part of their culture to be uh, meditating in wow. India and uh, even China and Japan and those types of places. So what is the third eye? My son talks about the third eye a lot. Tell us what the third eye is. Well, uh, we have these enter energy centers in our subtle body. Uh, there are seven major energy centers, and there are also seven other energy centers that I talk about in another one of my new books called The Big Book of Chakras and Chakra Healing. And... One of those energy centers is in the right in the middle of your head, uh, in the area of the pineal gland, and that is called the uh, command center in English. In Sanskrit, they call it Agya Chakra. So that is uh, that particular area is known as the place where the sixth sense is located, where your third eye is located. We have our two eyes, obviously, through which we see this magnificent world and all its wonders. But there is a third eye. And through that eye, we can see things hidden from view. We can visit places that we've never visited before. Uh, subtle levels of existence, subtle planes of existence. And we can also develop our spiritual gifts and clear audience, clairvoyant and clairsentient abilities. And those are seated in the third eye area. Um, so that particular chakra or energy center, it's known as an energy center, is really the center of intuition, insight. In fact, it is the, your inner teacher or inner guru. Um, each one of our major chakras or major energy centers uh, has a planet associated with it. The third eye chakra has the planet Jupiter associated with it. And amazingly, in Sanskrit, the word for Jupiter is guru. So the inner guru or inner teacher is located there in the area of the third eye. Well, I, I want to get to your books in just a minute, but you said you lived on an ashram for, for 22 years. Where was this located and what was that like for you? Um, yes, well, I lived in Maharishi's various ashrams, mostly, um, I guess mostly in the United States, actually, in Fairfield, Iowa, but also in uh, Europe. Uh, we traveled around in Europe while Maharishi was teaching teacher training courses at the time. Uh, his mission was to train as many people as possible to practice transcendental meditation. And so he trained 40,000 teachers, and those 40,000 teachers taught 6 million people to meditate during his lifetime. So uh, I was on his personal staff, and we lived in... Um, in Spain, in Italy, in Austria, and mostly in Switzerland, actually. And there we would rent uh, groups of hotels for people to come and 
stay and they would stay three months to six months, uh, even longer, nine months sometimes. And they would be trained and they would practice deep meditation and uh, have amazing experiences. And I was a part of that being on his staff. And now what was it like? It was like a combination of heaven and hell, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> you know, I think it's amazing, though, that that there are, is, uh, you know, more meditation here, except for, of course, the East, uh, Far East. Um, just amazing to me. I think that's that's wonderful. So tell us the, the, about your, your two new books, the book of uh, the big book of chakras and third eye meditations. What are the differences? What do they contain? Uh, what should our listeners look for in them and so forth? The big book of chakras and chakra healing is like an encyclopedia about the chakras. Uh, it, when my publisher asked me to write a book about the chakras, I went back to the ancient scriptures of India to find the most authentic information I could find about the subject. <laughs> And what I found in the Vedic and the Tantric okay. scriptures was a, a wealth of information, actually, that was not available anywhere in, in the West. People just didn't, they didn't have access to it because those scriptures are kind of obscure. And so um, I wrote this book and I also illustrated it heavily. It has a lot of graphics and illustrations in it. I happen to be an artist, so I did beautiful beautiful drawings of the various chakra deities and, and yantras, uh, which means symbols of the, of the various chakras. And, and also, like I said, a lot of graphics and other illustrations. Anyway, this book will tell you everything you ever wanted to know about ch chakras. And also it will tell you everything you never wanted to know about chakras. That's how chock full of information it is. It is really quite an amazing book and uh, like i said you just won't find this anywhere else it's uh it's a very detailed and very uh, powerful and kind of mind-blowing book <clears throat> wow now, thir third eye meditations that's uh, this lovely little book um it's more of like a gift size book and it is filled with these guided meditations affirmations, mantras are in there too, a few mantras, but mainly guided meditations and affirmations that you can use. That's like, uh, this makes meditation completely effortless. You don't have to do anything. I call it the do nothing program. That means do nothing, nothing, and less than nothing. And the less you do, the better experiences you're going to have. So third eye meditations is uh, a very lovely book and it will really help you to have the deep experiences of meditation and to develop many different aspects of your being um, just to give you a kind of an overview of this book third eye meditations uh, many different subjects are covered in this book different types of guided meditations so i'll just uh, read through this quickly uh, Chapter one is open the doorway to infinite consciousness. Next chapter, open the doorway to guided meditation. Next one, uh, to divine love and light. Next one, forgiveness and gratitude. Next, inner strength and protection. Next, uh, inner peace and contentment. Then meaningful relationships. Then purposeful, authentic life. Then health and energy. Then meaningful abundance then real power and true success, then universal love, uh, then ecological balance, uh, then world peace, uh, intuition and wisdom is next, and then wholeness and oneness, and then spiritual lifting, and finally, open the doorway to ascension. Wow, I love the one on world peace, if we could only have that, right? Uh, that is so important, yeah, if more people would think that way, maybe uh, we wouldn't be going through a lot of the things that we're going through right now. Absolutely. Well, those are wonderful things, you know, Susan. I, Dr. Susan is somebody who, you know, has lived and breathed this. And I'm really interested in the, um, the, the good and the bad of living on an ashram because I know people who have done that. Uh, what is the best thing and what is the worst thing? The best thing about living in an ashram uh, is getting away from the mundane 
everyday life that people are so embroiled in, uh, especially today with all the technology. I mean, back then when I was in the ashrams, there wasn't anything well, that didn't exist. But today it's much worse as far as the types of distractions that people are engaging in and continual uh, addictions, addiction to technology, addiction to their phones, really, and, you know, other kinds of addictions. But people uh, unplug. If they go to an ashram, you know, they unplug and they're not embroiled with the, all these addictions and and the, and their minds can be much more peaceful and they can feel uh, more sensitivity to the subtle world and to nature and to the natural flow of the world and, and the natural flow of, of energy. So it's great for health and well-being. It's great for increasing wisdom, for increasing spiritual awakening, having more powerful spiritual experiences when you are in that kind of isolated environment with like-minded people uh, and with a teacher who is guiding you in a very powerful way. It can really be an experience of heaven on earth. That's what, uh, what I experienced, especially the first time I went to India and, and visited Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. I spent six months there, and it was uh, an idyllic atmosphere, utopian kind of situation, and uh, just kind of floating around in bliss. So that is the good. That's the heaven part. And then the hell part <laughs> comes if you're actually a, a disciple, a person who the guru is attempting to change, to mold into the best part of themselves, shall we say. Because the guru or the teacher's job is to help the student become all that they can be. Well, if you're not really all that you can be yet, <laughs> that means you have to go through some major changes, and that can be a painful process. Um, and I call it open ego surgery. So the guru is working on you, working on your ego to, uh, to help you to change, to become something even better than you are right now. And so... Uh, all of us who were on Maharishi's staff, we all experienced this kind of open ego surgery. And we experienced that Maharishi would make us do things over and over and over and over again to try to improve whatever it is we're doing. It was never good enough. We always had to do it again and again and again and again and again. But not only that, he would praise us and make us feel like we were the most important thing since sliced bread. And then the next minute he would make us feel like we were a worm crawling around on the earth. So it was extremes. There was such extreme emotions that we went through. Heaven and hell, heaven and hell. It was an emotional roller coaster to the nth degree. There was incredible competition because of the fact that, that when you got close to this person, to Maharishi, you could feel these waves of bliss and waves of energy coming in your direction and you felt like you were in heaven. And so everyone was trying to get close to him. We were competing all the time to get near him. So that was another form of hell that we would go through. <laughs> it was really intense. It was much more intense than any kind of corporate environment you could ever imagine being wow. in. It was the most intense experiences that I ever had in my life. Well, and I wrote, a, I wrote a book about it, by the way, Dr. Gale. It's called Maharishi and Me. Seeking Enlightenment with the Beatles Guru. Oh, it's a wow. fantastic book. It's won 12 book awards, and it is a page turner. People just tell me how much they love that book. Well, we have less than two minutes left, Dr. Sue. Oh, my goodness. I tell, yeah, I want to tell people, where can they get your books? How can they reach you? Uh, I don't know if you have a gift for them. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Where can they reach you, and where can they get the books? They can get uh, the books anywhere. The books are sold. Uh, they can reach me at drsusan.org, drsusan.org. And also I have another 
website address, which is divinetravels.com, divine travels, that's plural on the travels.com. And if you want to get a special gift, go to susangift.com, susangift.com. That's fantastic. Well, that kind of wraps it up for us in terms of where they can find you. So there's lots of things that Dr. Susan can do for you. And I would go and find look her up because she's everywhere as far as books are concerned. And she's got all these books. She's got 17 of them in English. So go to uh, wherever you buy books, whether it's Amazon or whether it's uh, Barnes & Noble, wherever you go. Uh, get the get the books and see a little bit about what she's talking about. And her two newest books are Third Eye Meditations and um, Big Book of Chakras. So, um, gosh, so much, so much, Dr. Susan. Thank you so much for being with us today. I hope that our audience is now enlightened about all of this. And uh, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thanks for inviting me, Dr. Gale. I really enjoyed speaking with you today. You've had the opportunity to get to know me over the last few years, and I'd like to get to know you as well. One of the things I'm offering is training for the media. I have a wonderful program that will get you ready for any radio or TV interview you might be offered. Many of you are doing wonderful things, but no one knows about them. Others of you are successful and wonder what's next. Whether you're in a business or have a special cause or a specific event you're promoting, media can help and I can help you master your message so you can master the media. If this sounds interesting to you, email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com with media training in the subject line. I promise I will be in touch.